This is the truth behind Deontay Wilder loss to Tyson Fury. In boxing are commonplace. Uh, what was the problem? I broke my back. What is the truth behind behind it? What do you mean by that? Your back is broken. How many times have we seen a fighter say, I'm not making excuses, then proceed to rail off two or three reasons why they lost without mentioning the possibility that they were perhaps beaten by the better man? You know what? Andre Wolf had a hell of a fight. I don't want to hop on what he did too much, but I feel a little, I feel a little worn quite out. A bit. I wasn't feeling my best. I Maybe mean, like I said, because I felt extremely weak. And I weighed in about 166. So by the time I got in the ring, I felt dead. It's a defensive mechanism, a mental block. A way for a fighter to begin the healing process knowing that there is still conceivably 10 or 20 percent more to give next time. A perfectly reasonable means, and I think fans can sympathize with that sentiment for the most part. But then, Deontay Wilder right. happened. I knew what was going on with my body. I felt it when the mask came off. I knew something was wrong with me. I knew I was not right. You know, just using a bunch of excuses for getting whooped there was, like that. I remember there some excuses. Saying that Tyson Fury's I remember only hearing two excuses that his suit was too heavy. That's all I remember. But Gloves, did he say, maybe he um, said more. Weren't attached correctly. An excuse maker. The guy who couldn't face reality that he lost. He actually went down a litany of things that he started to say that were done against him without any real proof. <laughs> done against him. Me off so bad. <laughs> 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 right, it, was, it wasn't the 40 pound. Uh, suit that he had on coming dying. to the ring. That may have been <laughs> a reason why his legs weren't there, but it wasn't the reason. This might be the most embarrassing excuse that I've ever heard. Because I speak it, believe me, see you. Speak it, believe me, see you. Speak it, believe me, see you. What was the man saying? I don't even remember. I just remember the suit one for sure. And that was pretty crazy because, like, he picked the suit. The former <laughs> WBC he heavyweight known, champion you know? Deontay Wilder has clearly struggled to get grips with the fact that Tyson Fury, the boxer, is the sole reason his perfect unblemished record has been tainted, producing an unprecedented amount of excuses during the fallout of both fights. I can't make no excuses tonight. I've got a lot of complications. On today's video, we'll be analyzing those excuses in the iceberg format, basically from the most credible down to the depths of what I personally see as implausible. Deontay Wilder's Wait, this man has so many category. reasons that he could make an iceberg? Holy. I'm happy to angry. If you enjoy the content around here, a thumbs up would be appreciated. Here now, BLD this is a new video format. The Deontay Wilder Excuse Iceberg Explained. Okay. Let's see it. Broken hand. During the build-up to Wilder Fury 2, the Deontay his, told various media outlets, including the BT Sports documentary team, that he had broken his right hand during his preparation for the first Fury fight. The first Fury fight, uh, I broke my hand, so I had only had one hand. The right hand was, uh, it was very off in camp. I didn't want to throw it to to injure it even more. I, I felt like if if I reserved it and throw it in the fight, then if I broke it in the fight, then I'm getting paid. Although there was no evidence provided, I still see this as the most plausible excuse due to Wilder's long history of injuries with his hands. Somewhere in the region of 2009, Wilder crashed his motorcycle, which led to Whoa. rods being placed. What the? Is it like a tribal rap on Somewhere his motorcycle? Somewhere in the region of 2009, Wilder hmm. crashed his motorcycle, which led That's to rods weird. being placed in his right arm hmm. and metal pins in his hand. Despite the surgery, his hands have broken on many occasions throughout his career, with MRI scans proving that fact in his fights with Bermain Steve and Chris Ariola. The Wilder swings. Holy moly. With MRI scans proving that fact in his fights some with Bermain Steve and Chris Ariola, he proceeded to land some Hail Mary blows that night, but I think this excuse still holds weight. Could be possible. It's hard to really narrow down precisely what Deontay meant by being a zombie. But during his first interview after his knockout defeat to Fury, he told the PBC, Like I said, I can't talk about a lot of things, but it, it wasn't like Deontay Wilder. Now, you can tell from the mask, from my reaction to certain things that I was doing in the ring. And that night, it was, it, it, I wasn't myself. I felt like a zombie in there. I felt like, I felt, <laughs> there's right. a lot of things I can't say. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things. Although some other excuses will tie into the zombie narrative later, I think Wilder might have just had a touch of stage fright while being under the lights. I think the fact Deontay was well over a stone heavier than his previous say, six fights could have that made could him just feel be a bit caused by you know Tyson being Tyson in the ring and the lights and stuff you know like 
Tyson bullying him and beating him could, you know, make him feel like not normal. <laughs> Sluggish also. Not uncommon in boxing, but it's rarely used as an excuse. Mm. Interesting. Bias referee. This is where the accusations start running a bit deeper. Oh. Wilder has been particularly vocal on what he feels was biased officiating in Fury's favor during both fights. Deontay's issues with Jack Reese, the referee for the first fight, was that he thought Jack had an emotional connection to Fury because of his depression story. That relationship then led to Fury getting more time to get up from the brutal knockdown in the 12th. Watching this back, I'm more surprised that Jack didn't wave the fight off immediately rather than the supposed extra time given. The truth is, this knockdown was handled faultlessly. Jack did his job by the book, and replays of the knockdown show that he kept counting due to Fury's eyes showing a response after 5 or so seconds of the count. You can watch Jack's full breakdown yeah, of Jack why he handled the chance. situation as he did on the BT Sports Which YouTube was huge. channel. But as far as I'm concerned, there was little evidence of biased officiating that night. Kenny Bayless was officiating the rematch, and despite the large majority of boxing fans feeling he showed bias towards Wilder, point deductions, various regeneration <laughs> periods, etc., Deontay still His slammed the Hall of Fame referee for allowing what he felt was an excessive amount of rabbit punches. I can sympathize with Deontay in this regard because Tyson did, and often does, get away with an unfair amount of dirty tactics. Yet the fact he took a point away kind of negates his argument as a whole. My True. take after watching the rematch so the multiple ref was times, watching. Bayless didn't and have willing his best to stop night, it. but if any bias was shown, it came across in Deontay's favor. Of all Mystery the excuses man. Deontay made in terms of influencing his loss, <laughs> what? blaming the former Mystery world man champ Andre Morel is the one to me that holds the most weight. On the Charlo Brothers YouTube channel, they uploaded a ringside blog of the Wilder Fury rematch. During a small segment of the vlog, a loud voice can be heard screaming for the towel to be thrown in. That voice was later identified as Andre Durrell's, a fighter trained by the same man as Tyson Fury, one Javon Sugar Hill. I'll be honest, I think the yelling could have perhaps played a part in Breland, Deontay's coach's decision to stop the fight, considering the entire ringside audience was obviously paying attention to Everybody what he was, was looking over But here then again, the man. everything falls apart when you take a second to think about the context. Deontay was taking the beating of a lifetime, yeah, man was getting punched from pillar to post shit, while though. blood poured out of his ear. Deontay wanting to go out on his shield, it's understandable. But even in a brutal sport like boxing, I think I was screaming the same shit. But I was at home. <laughs> quarter teams need to take into account. Nothing, indeed, is impossible when you carry the power like Deontay. But him coming back to win that rematch was as close as it's going to get. When the referee Kenny Bayless was interviewed the morning after, he told the Ring magazine that he was very close to stopping the fight anyway. Thus, the result would have been the same. However, I can see why Deontay was pissed that the last voice he could hear in the fight was Andre Durrell screaming for the towel to be thrown in. This is kind of weird. But the man was trying to look at Whether you're a big him. boxing fan or not, the Deontay Wilder costume fiasco is a situation you're likely aware of, being that it's the excuse that made the most headlines. The outfit that you wore to the ring, mm -hmm. wearing over 40. Wait, what was this one? The uh, costume? Oh, yeah, this is the one I know. Yes, yes, yes. Whether you're a big boxing fan or not, the Deontay Wilder costume fiasco is a situation you're likely aware of, being that it's the excuse that made the most headlines. Mm -hmm. The outfit that you wore to the ring, wearing over 40 pounds, is why <laughs> you think you lost this fight? To pay homage to Black History Month, Deontay decided to wear a multi-battery, jewel-filled electronic costume that really looked look like crazy. it crafted by Rita to of defeat the Mighty Morphin the Power Toy Rangers. Story. That is an extraordinary oh. outfit. Or Power Rangers. In all fairness, the outfit looked pretty awesome, but due to all of its True. gimmicks, it weighed in excess of 40 pounds. The idea that Deontay Wilder with a 40-pound outfit on, that it killed his legs, walk into the ring, that's crazy talk. I don't understand why he would say that. Deontay claimed the suit weakened his legs, and by the fourth round, he was out on his feet. Not because of Fury's assault, but because the costume was zapped of his energy. Deontay also revealed he had tried on the outfit the night before, and on fight night, wore it for 30 or 40 minutes before making his way to the ring. This would have unquestionably tired him out to a certain degree, but Wait, my question is... He, he wore it for the 30 to 40 minutes and still decided, yeah, I'm gonna go out there with it. <laughs> yeah, why not? This feels perfect.
Why didn't he just drop the idea if the thing was so dang heavy? Right. Stupidity is likely the answer, but to make matters worse, an old clip of him talking about his training regimen on the Joe Rogan podcast resurfaced, where he claimed he wears a 45-pound vest at all times during all exercises that involve using his feet. Oh, if, right. I'm, if I'm doing anything that consists of well, me moving my be... feet is sprinting mm -hmm. and stuff, stuff well, like I that, I, I wear a 45-pound uh, um, vest on me as well too in all my exercise and everything that but I, I guess do. you wouldn't want that on the night of the fight right. Mm -hmm. right i have this excuse so high up the iceberg because i genuinely think it could have hindered his performance yet as stephen a smith said the validity have, of the like, excuse is fault. irrelevant due to its embarrassing nature yeah. some things are just better left unsaid right a bicep injury when Junior fought, Deontay's chief sparring partner for the Fury rematch told the press about a potential bicep tear during the late stages of camp. The boxing world responded with, wait, an excuse that Deontay kept a secret? But no, it was only a matter of time before the bronze bomber came to light and expressed the details of an alleged seven surgeries to his right bicep after his loss. Um, with this whole bicep We've gone through thing, at least five reasons things now. going into Russia I will never speak about. It's boxing. Well, there's still you know, 13 minutes left, holy any negatives it's just about what did you do in the ring what spirit did you have my position is the same as anthony yards it's too much hearsay without documented proof regardless of the seriousness fans rarely sympathize with alleged injuries for two reasons one injuries are commonplace in contact sports and most top fighters right. enter the ring injured in one way or another two why enter the ring injured when you're not only hindering your own chances of winning but robbing fans of seeing what they paid for in the first place the best version of you taking on the best version of your opponent Naturally, a payday true. is usually the motivating factor. If I reserved it and throw it in the also fight, true. then if I broke it in the fight, then I'm getting paid, 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 paid. Payday is just too nice. Baby oil. After their first fight, Wait, is Deontay he insisted <laughs> he didn't want to make Wait, any excuses. Wait, he thinks Tyson covered himself conference. in baby oil? Well, I mean, we don't make no excuses. He then proceeded to make outlandish claims, such as Fury was covered in baby oil. You know, right. he started overshooting. It felt like he had baby oil on him, too. He was slippery. It's impossible He's to slippery. debunk, but at face value, it seems like perspiration. <laughs> he was slippery. Right. PDs. This is an allegation that's wrongly been placed upon Deontay, as according to my research, the Fury performance-enhancing drug scandal for the Wilder rematch appears to be a baseless accusation made by the former heavyweight champ, Haseem Rockman, that, according to this interview on FightHype.com, mm -hmm. He couldn't understand how Fury improved offensively so exceedingly in such a short period of time. My first impression right. of that whole fight was I would think that um, Tyson Fury was on something. You know, um, I know he was on something when he beat Klitschko. And I mean, I just right. think man didn't think he just unlocked the tech after 12 rounds. That quick. First off, Asim, Fury didn't crazy. fail any drug tests for the Klitschko fight, and there is zero evidence to suggest otherwise. Secondly, the Kronk Gym. The Kronk's aggressive training style and tactics are why Fury beat Wilder the way he did. Right. You of all people the tech know the difference crazy. that Jim can make. Again, it's he entirely possible from being that Fury, an outside or even fighter Wilder to an, in this case, a were bully. taking PEDs that night. The sport is riddled with cheats, yet no one failed the test, so it's just all unfounded denunciations based on the eye test. Right. Early stoppage. Not an early I can always sympathize when a fighter, particularly know. a champion, wants that. to go out on the shield. It was had a busted eardrum. He was on the ropes. It was looking rough. This section could have been crossed out completely once you factor in our Andre Durrell piece from earlier. That was until recently when Deontay openly expressed what he felt was a traitor in his camp. In the end, it took a crab in the bucket referee and a disloyal trainer to throw the towel in just to stop me. Deontay spoke out and accused his longtime cornerman Mark Breland of throwing in the towel early. Not to protect his fighter's interest, but because he had a secret allegiance with Team Fury. Fortunately, Mark Breland, who I believe is a great coach, but an even better person, is getting thrown under the bus. I don't agree with it. Wilder sacked Breland soon after the rematch, and the two have since released public statements regarding what they feel was the truth. Breland claimed Wilder is untrainable and not willing to listen. Wilder, on the other hand, insisted Breland is a traitor and jealous of what he has achieved in regards to his own unfulfilled career. A nasty breakup all around, yet the accusations from Wilder were only beginning to heat up. Boy, we're below the ice now. Glove manipulation. Not to be confused with some of the allegations to come, glove manipulation was a claim made by Deontay in a hard-hitting video tweet at the end of last year. I saw in the first fight where Regan had him was pulling down your gloves to put your fist in the improper position. 
y'all y'all tried the same method the second time but this time you scratched flesh out of my ears which caused my ears to bleed okay stop right there <laughs> now ricky hatton's involved from what we can gather deontay is accusing ricky of pulling down fury's glove so that tyson can land strikes while his hand is in the lower part of the glove so now he's landing as you see in the video footage for the pictures Wait, he's so landing he's saying shot his... on the chin Wait, what? He's saying his fist is like right here? Yo, footage for the pictures. He's landing the shot on the chin with this part of the glove where there's no padding. Not only has this been debunked by other pros as a useless strategy, but Ricky himself responded by what he felt was an absurd accusation to throw at a fellow pro. Some of these comments is just, uh, you know, it's quite insulting. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, you know to, to sort of like throw accusations like that at a fellow professional. If one comment could sum up this video, uh, it's eh? this one. The clip is hardly itself damning, True. even out of context. But the most bizarre thing of all, this clip like is from the crazy. first fight, where Deontay fought to a draw and wasn't hit by any shots that seemed extraordinary. Yeah, kind of weird. Spiked water. We told you the Breedland drama was only starting to heat up as Deontay's last words on the matter involved a very spikedful accusation. But it wasn't just the suit, 7 8. Absolutely. It wasn't. You know what I'm saying? My water was tampered with, bro. From the point of coming living in my dressing room, going eat. into the ring, drinking surf water and stuff, and trying to keep myself hydrated and stuff like that, man, I just start, I started feeling weird. In a phone interview with 78 Sports TV, Deontay claimed Breland not only threw in the towel mm. on purpose, but spiked his water with a muscle relaxer. Again, tying muscle in to the whole Breland grand conspiracy to dethrone the king, as Deontay put it. Your uh, king is here. I was gonna say, why would your own coach like hit you with a muscle relaxer? But I forgot he thinks that he was on Team Fury as well. Deontay claimed Breland was the only man to feed him water throughout the fight. Yet that can be debunked before the first bell even rang. No oh. evidence was provided huh. to suggest anything out of so the ordinary <laughs> was in his system. Was it just the heavy costume taking its toll, or something more sinister? Well, the wider boxing community has a hard time believing any of it. That he, he felt that uh, his water was spiked. Stop. Uh, yeah. stop! 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 Okay. Stop. How man. many losses do I got? Eight. Eight. Yeah. Somebody spiked my water on all those eight fights, <laughs> and I'm letting you know right now. Here's the water that spot. Those eight <laughs> fights, I think my water was spiked. I'm telling you. Believe me, brother. I believe. You. A close second behind the costume excuse in terms of public outrage <laughs> was the Glovegate conspiracy, or Glovegate 2.0. The Glovegate. Well, first of all, look how the glove is broken in. Let's just look at that. This glove is already broken in. Look at the pattern and enough. Look how thin the glove is, okay? Pictures and slow motion gifs were shared around Twitter and other social GIFs. media sites, which appeared to show a lack of filler in Tyson Fury's gloves. The context of clips was irrelevant, despite most of them being from the first fight, as fans would mash up clips to try and create cheating narratives to excuse Wilder's loss. Nick Asbury, a longtime sparring partner of Fury, added fire to the flame when he released a short video showing Tyson's sparring gloves compared to his own. This is Tyson's and these are his bag, his sparring gloves that he was sparring with. As you can see, there's no padding in here, and all the padding's in the back. Even though I have my doubts about this video, its most damning outcome doesn't for a second mean Fury removed padding in his gloves for the Wilder fights. Some YouTubers have pushed the mm. algorithm as far as possible to spread this narrative, so whenever you search the term, you'll be met by hours How would even hours get the padding out, though? They, like, watch them wrap subjects. their hands and Trust then... Trust me, I sat through a lot them of nonsense pick the during gloves. the research for this. He's a coward. Like, both teams watch Tyson each other Fury pick the gloves, I think. Cheated on Deontay Wilder, period. Before every fight, a commission will hold That's a meeting where both fighters crazy. and their teams can attend and approve one another's gloves. Due to the Margarito controversy roughly 10 years ago, the level of inspection in today's game is at a much higher standard. Right. Here, we can literally see Jake Dees, Wilder's head coach, closely inspecting Fury, wrapping right. up and tying his gloves before the devastating rematch. Admittedly, some of the clips do raise an eyebrow, and I can see how casual fans might come across some of these videos and be drawn into what seems like pretty damning evidence. Boxing commissions, the WBC in particular, have dealt with these issues in the past and have caught cheaters under investigation. Do you really think they wouldn't have found something that they felt necessary to investigate under the heavy scrutiny of these fights? Deontay Wilder sure. was their golden asset and someone they valued dearly. I can assure you, they would have been the first ones to call out any foul play if there was indeed anything they were to like, recognize. Probably double oh, and just remember, 99% like of everything. the clips are from the first fight, and this narrative barely existed until Fury knocked him out in the rematch. You know, not unless... Uh, Deontay Wilder's own trainer, J.D. was in on a conspiracy as well. 
along with all the uh, Las Vegas State Commission guys uh, who never left the uh, room. Hmm. Jay Diaz was in the room while I had my hands wrapped. He examined them. He was in there when I had my gloves put on. Hmm. Examined them. <laughs> Batman. The gypsy curse. Mm, but then he started getting his legs back under him, and then yeah. he started landing. There's also other things as well, too. You know, he's still a gypsy, though. Yeah. You know, you know they believe in a lot of things. Yeah. You a lot know of that, I mean? right? Like Deontay thinks he got. So, yeah, you never know. You he know. got cursed. <laughs> Joe Rogan responds to this how most normal human beings would. Gypsy Some curse. Supernatural Who would believe in. such a thing? Well, Deontay wasn't joking. He's double and triple down on this narrative during the multiple Juju. interviews since his draw with Fury. That would slow me down. See, they thought they was going to take me out in the second and third round. But that voodoo judo, that gypsy gumbo soup didn't work. Fury even came out publicly to say he doesn't indeed possess any gypsy powers. Not that it really needed to be said. He followed up by saying that perhaps his mind games before the fight planted a seed and shook Deontay's confidence, which to me sounds just a slight bit more plausible. Deontay is openly superstitious, right. which is not surprising considering he comes from a family of preachers. Most boxers are men of faith, and you'll often see them praising God for their victories after the fight. Yet when you allow your belief in the supernatural to potentially hinder your performance, it might be time to separate and celebrate them as two different entities. Loaded gloves. Wait, now he thinks the gloves are I loaded. I saved the most confusing for last. Because what? while a group of fans were pushing the removed glove filler people think it's empty Deontay now Wilder's people think brother it's Marcellus full. chucked a considerable spanner in the works by proclaiming not only did Fury have his gloves filled with horsehair and foam, but a solid object, potentially an egg weight, hidden amongst the mix. It was discovered by the doctors that my brother has a dent in the side of his head due to a blunt object struck against his head from his last fight. Before you ask, no, this picture isn't <laughs> real. In all honesty, the real picture does still look quite incriminating. That is until you realize it's just a hyperimposed version of this one, which appears to be your run-of-the-mill swelling after being punched repeatedly by a man that weighs 275 pounds. All Deontay right. championed his brother's theory during that tweet at the end of last year. How looks like he waked him up pretty well, but <laughs> something that sounds like the shape of an egg weight. It's the reason why the side of my face swelled up in an egg weight form. As for the dent, I think what makes it look bad is the fact that there are numerous swellings around the same area, which makes one part look crushed in, when in reality it's just the surrounding area inflamed. I'm not saying for certain that Fury didn't hide something in his gloves, remove padding, groom the ref, cover himself in excessive oil, take PEDs, or engage in Breland's <laughs> master plans to dethrone the king. Long list. I'm just saying there's no evidence, other than some blurry pictures and Deontay's word, to take for any of it. True. Yeah, this is such a now, long I list. could imagine that there are a few people who oh, will assume to have a bias to Team Fury or some unconditional hate for Wilder, but the truth is, I picked Deontay to win the first fight. I honestly thought his power could overcome the skill gap. I'm not mad that I was wrong. I've been a fan of both these guys dating back as far as 2008 when they were just starting out. I was one of the first people on YouTube making videos about Deontay while most, not all, hardcores among the community were trashing him on the forums and in the comment sections. Even now, as the third fight between the two looms, I don't lean one way or another. I don't think other. I watched their fight until the, the second one. Win. Witnessing greatness is my biggest oh, motivation. Oh man, their second and third fight, fight were good. Despite all the, the ludicrous excuses good. made by Deontay, I, I still wish live. him all the best moving forward. The only thing I found genuinely bothersome was how his relationship with Breland ended. From the outside looking in, sure, it seemed uncalled weird. for from Deontay's perspective, doing it in the public manner he did. That's not shit. That's not shit. That's not shit. That's not shit. Yet, with his new coach Malik Scott, this could be the refresh he needed, bringing in the man that could perhaps teach him a few things that Breland struggled with. So, where is Deontay's mindset in terms of dealing with that loss today? And uh, when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. So, it was never a dark moment for me, only light. Away with the fairies and nothing will change, which is a bit of a buzzkill for me. If right. Deontay's previous excuses were truthful, particularly on the injury ones, then the third fight will surely be a whitewash, as one fighter is a fragile injury prone sure, mess, <laughs> while the other is blessed by the gypsy gods and punches so hard it feels as if he's solid objects fight. in his gloves. What's to get excited about? Well, in the case the majority of boxing fans were right, and Deontay was telling a few white lies, we could still be in for an intriguing matchup between one of the most destructive heavies ever and one of the most unpredictable and brilliant fighting men of our time. Absolutely was massive. Quite the spectacle. Thanks for watching. That was a good video. Very enjoyable.